Welcome back with Live with the Mod, the Poet, powered by Revolution of One, where we have the greatest guests and most powerful conversations, and today is no different. We have a very special guest on the program with us today. We have author, coach, motivational speaker, brother William King Hollis on the program with us today. How you doing today, family? Oh, man, I'm blessed, man. I'm, I'm highly, highly blessed, man, and just living the dream right now, man, just working hard, man. And I did want to say, uh, first and foremost, it's an honor to have you on the program with us. And um, I really just appreciate you taking out a few moments to spend with us and um, give us some game and some knowledge. So I'm um, very humbled by your presence. And I appreciate you being here on the program with us today. Absolutely. Um, but before we get into uh, some of the background, the background story, uh, I did want to touch on something I saw you tweet out the other day. Um, did you do you have an upcoming commercial uh, on the Super Bowl coming up? Yeah, it actually will premiere tomorrow on NFL Network at like 2.15 and mm. then uh, the pregame uh, kickoff speech. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be legendary. It's a group of um, the top football speeches in the world. Mines is one of them. Mm. Uh, mine is actually ranked number one in the world, but they wanted to make it diverse and add other people into it so i was all in for it so they, they did that but uh it's just a great great time man for them to drop that football speech it's an honor man it really is if you if you don't mind speaking on it how did that opportunity come about or, or what were your energy or your thoughts when that opportunity came across i mean your table I mean, every, I, I thought it was coming eventually anyway, King. Mm. I got the, the number one, if you type best football speech ever, it's the number one searched and watched football speech in the world ever right now. It's ranked number one. So I knew somebody was going to use it. They actually tried to use it for the NFL draft, the 2022 NFL draft, but I, I missed the message somehow mm. on the road, man. Mm. Well, it's a blessing that it came back around in, in, in even greater fashion. It's oh, a yeah. blessing. Oh, but 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 for the audience who may not know um, about uh, everything that you do with the community work, coaching and motivational speaking, how did you get into um, motivational speaking and coaching? Well, motivational speaking kind of chose me. I was actually homeless out in Redding, Pennsylvania. I was sleeping at the Turkey Hill gas station. Part time, I would be um, interning as a coach with the Redding um the ASI Panthers down in mm. Redding, Pennsylvania. And a teacher saw me talking to the players. And one day she came to the gas station and saw me around there. Um, and, uh, you know, she said, I love how you talk to the players. I love for you to come speak to a group of young men at my school. And, you know, um, she probably called me back two, three days later. And mm. I went in and spoke to like five young men within five minutes. They was in tears. It was the first time I ever told my story. A lot of people don't realize when you tell your story for the first time, um, it'll awaken a lot of things in you. Um, you you won't even realize how much you really had went through and withstood. Um, so I was going back to the Redding Hotel to go in the bathroom, bro, and, and blow my brains out. I wanted to mm -hmm. commit suicide. This time my mom passed over heroin overdose in Pontiac, Michigan. And uh, you know, I, I was really, my father was incarcerated, uh, just a lot of pain, a lot of things that, you know, I just didn't understand and just was tired to be honest with you current growing up in Michigan and a lot of inner city sometimes, bro, you know, you got to grow up and be a man before you become one. So I, I was really tired, more tired than the average, uh, you know, uh, a 25 year old or 26 year old. And, you know, um, uh, she right before I got to the hotel, I got a phone call. I was like, how much do you charge to speak? At this time, I knew nothing about motivation. Um, she asked me to come in uh, and speak to an assembly of 500 students. Um, I said seventy five, one hundred dollars or something sort like that. And, uh, you know, I went to the assembly probably a week later um, and uh fast uh, 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 rewind that um, that after she had told me that I put the gun back in my bag went to the, uh, the 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 free computer that was in the hotel and basically I it, it turned in typed in motivational speaker because I actually didn't know that much about him mm. um, typed it in Les Brown popped up in the Georgia Dome I loved it um, took some keys from him and then went and did assembly my first ever event of 500 kids I got a standing ovation. Um, you fast forward uh, 10 years later, man, I'm over 900 million views on YouTube. You know, first speaker to speak during Milan Fashion Week. Uh, 
you know, a number one football speech in the world and just got a, a deal with the producers of sports science to launch my own daily show. So, you mm. know, it, it, it's nobody but God. I really didn't choose it. I think it chose me. Mm. And man, man, that's a blessing. Um, and it, it's so much power in your story. I heard um, you talk about it with uh, Tim Bill, you, um and you was talking to, talking with him about your story. And um, it just raised so many questions in my head just about like um, mental health wise and how you process that. What was your journey to to process that? And I, and I saw you um, post uh, put up a tweet the other day about mourning and how it's important to understand that it's a process um, and, and, and it's a process that it, it takes longer for some things than others. Um, and you have to be patient with yourself to reach that, to reach that meant that, that, that space of peace. What was your process like? Um, if you don't mind sharing, like, um, trying to get to a level space, um, I mean, going from the edge to different things that's going on in your life. How did you get to the space that you're at now? Well, first off the most high got a plan for all of us. You know what I mean? And I tell people depression, mental health, all is in the family of not doing what you were born to do. A lot of people run from mm. the things that they're going to do. I was talking about it in another interview one time and I said, um, you know, it's a football player out there that was born to be a doctor. Um, it's a rapper out there that was actually born to be a minister, a preacher, a teacher, a God. But what we do as human beings is we try to control our destiny. But the truth is, in all the reality, anybody that got any relationship with God, they understand that God has the final say in whatever we do. So what I had to do is, and what I did, how I escaped mental health is by diving into what I love every day, no matter what it was. If I didn't get paid for it, if I wasn't getting the fame for it, I just did what I what I love to do. And a lot of people, they they have, they have buried the thing that they were born to do. They know what it is. They buried it, mm. and they're running from it. Because in the in the society eyes, it might not look cool. It might not look like that's the thing I want to do. But I, I tell people, it's a speech I created called Get Out of God's Way. And a lot of people, they stand in his way while he's trying to navigate you through life. So what I did was I got out of God's way. I, I dived into what I love to do, was, which is inspire, which I never knew I love to do. But the thing you would know what you were born to do and it becomes easy to you and amazing to the world. So mm -hmm. what I started to do, I started to speak and I started to notice people being inspired, people being uplifted. And I learned this very key. As I healed and helped other individuals, God healed me piece by piece. So after you heal over a million people and you inspire over millions of people, eventually your body going to be full. You're going to be whole. You're going to be healed. And that's when you'll really know that you're in the right direction of life. So oftentimes people are depressed and want to give up on life because they're going in the wrong direction. And what happens when you go in the wrong direction, You the, the same time frame that it took you going in the wrong direction is going to take you the same time frame to get back to the starting point. Because before you can get back on that, that roller coaster of going in the right direction, you got to start in the beginning. You got to go back to the beginning. And a lot of people don't like to take that journey back to the beginning and start over. But if God's been telling you something your whole life and you continue to ignore it and you continue to go down this road, eventually you're going to realize that you lost. And that's when people get to the breaking point. When they know they got to turn around and go all the way back to their, their, their current destination, their, their original destination, and then start from there and get to the next destination. That's mm. the laziness that a lot of people don't want to go through. So what I tell people is the reason why you want to kill yourself, the reason why you want to take your life is because you've been traveling in the wrong direction. But you also don't have the energy and you also don't have the willpower to go back and start from the beginning. And that's the only way you're going to get to your final destination. It's just like a GPS. If you don't put in your current destination, you can never get to your final destination because you don't mm. know how far it is. So uh, by, by, by living and, and, and trying to travel these roads without a map, without a, 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 a compass, without a, a navigation system. What you end up doing is you end up getting lost. And when you get lost, you get frustrated. And when you get frustrated and you don't know which direction to go, you try to take your life. You want to die right there because you're lost. So what I did was I found my, I went all the way back to the beginning. I thought football was it. I went all the way back to the beginning and I started over. Mm. And I took the journey. I took the bumps. I took the, the lumps of life. I bled. I laid down and bled a while. But I also realized as I served God, I was served myself. I was healed every single day. So now when I look at competition and I look at um, obstacles or I look at anything, I'm going to exceed every expectation. 
because I took that journey back to the beginning. You can't skip the process. And a lot of people, when they try to skip the process, they get to a suicidal state because they realize that doing it their way never worked. Mm. It never worked. So when I start doing it for God, I start focusing on God and working for God. I learned this, that God promotions are everlasting. I'm forever promoted. I, I'm happy in every sense of the way. And I already been through hell. Christmas Day, my father was murdered in Detroit. Left for dead in the car by a close friend, somebody who still don't know about the case. But if I didn't know and didn't wasn't able to go back to that beginning phase, I never would have had the strength to continue to keep going. And, 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 and I watched God work. 11 days before my father passed, my son came. Mm. So when my son came, God would replace things. But he also equipped me to continue my journey in this life and to continue to inspire individuals that's ready to give up on life. It's always going to seem hard. It's easy to quit and take your life. That's easy. But what's hard is going back to the beginning and starting that journey all over again. Because sometimes you're going to have to start that journey over, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but over a hundred times sometimes until you get it right. And that's the people that give up, King. They don't want to get it right. If you take your life, you gave up on yourself. You gave up on God. You basically showed God that you don't trust him enough to bring you out of whatever storm that you're going through. Mm. And you got to mm. trust him. Mm. Mm. I trust God all the way through. I trust mm. God with a blindfold. Mm. And when I got God, I, don't, I fear nothing. You can bring the demons, you can bring the devils, you can say I'm on demon, it don't matter. You're nothing to me. I'm a soldier of God. Then I, I realized, you know, uh, 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 emotions. Mm. You know, mm. the Honorable uh, Louis uh, Farrakhan and, and the Honorable... Uh, um, uh, uh, Louis Farrakhan and uh, 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 sorry, oh, this is a terrible forget. I can't believe I forgot my brother. Louis Farrakhan and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, Honorable Elijah first Muhammad. The, yes. First, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, he talked about emotions. Mm. Emotions will kill you faster than a gun. Mm. Because emotions takes you out of your thought process. It, it removes you from the manhood that God gave you. Once you can't control your emotions, you are no longer a man. You're a child. So mm. what happens is we get in our emotions and we throw everything away. Most of the brothers that's locked up and incarcerated, most of the brothers that's dead and laying in the cemetery is because of one second. They couldn't control their emotions. Ooh, you talking to so, me, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. So when you talk about emotions, King, emotions for a man is everything. That's his superpower. Once you can get control of that, it's like the song. What's love but a second day? Emotion. It's an emotion. All of this in life is an emotion. And then in the Quran, it talks about what? Eliminating pride. Mm. Pride will prevent you from getting to the blessing that God has for you. Mm. Because you will sit there and think you know it all. But what I realized, what God showed me was, if you walk around the world like you got it all, the angels will feel like you need no help. Ooh. So, Ooh. you know, it, 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 life is a simple game. But those two things you got to control, your pride and your emotions. Mm, bro, I'm telling you, brother, you 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 dropping gems for real. Um, and those who know, know it's crazy. I just got done reading the book, um, The Way of the Superior Man. So it's like right on time what you're saying. And that whole book just breaks down. You can be a man or essentially a boy, or you can be a real man. You can be a superior man, one who knows how to rise above his emotions, one who knows how to 
go into a, a chaotic situation. And even though he feels like destruction is the answer, he chooses peace. He chooses love. He chooses to smile through the pain. You know what I'm saying? Somebody is agitated. He chooses to lean into the pain. And I'm just like, whoo, you, you touching it right there. You touching it right there. And it's just like, that's the path of a real man. It's so excruciating. There's no rewards for it. People not, they don't, they don't clap up. You, this is the, this, this is what a man is supposed to be, but it's not what men are today. And it's just like, that's the hardest part. Cause it's like, if I go and do that manly action, I'm not going to get affirmed for it. But God is my affirmation. How I feel after the situation is my affirmation. But so many, so many times in the day's time, we need that that external validation from the person that we're rising above for or that situation we're rising above for. And it's it's really an inner it's really an inner affirmation that we have to have. Like, yeah, I just handled that like a man. Like I just did that. You know what I'm saying? It's I'm like, wow, man, that. That's deep. That's powerful, brother. That's that. That's powerful. Absolutely, absolutely, King. And uh, you know, you know that that's life, bro. You know, um, a boy gets offended by constructive criticism. A man gets excited. Mm. You know, mm. constructive criticism, something that a lot of young black men and men in general can't take, mm. because we grow up without any father figures. We grow up with nobody ever telling us nothing. So when somebody tries to tell us something, it's almost like somebody scratching a chalkboard. Mm. You can't receive it. So everything that pushes you um, to, to, the, to the optimum level is the best thing for you. Whatever trial and tribulation, the harder it get, the more blessed you are. Mm. Because God wouldn't have brought you there Mm. If you knew you wasn't equipped or strong enough to make it through. Mm. But what happens is you lose faith in your adulthood because you watch other adults and you judge God by a man or a woman. When they're just children of the Lord. They're just children of the Most High. They're not the Most High. Mm. So you start to hate God. Because of somebody else. It's like in the streets today when a nigga say, when, a, when a, he say, hey, that, that, that's an op. Mm. You messing with my ops? No, that ain't my ops. Your ops. Mm. That preacher that's pretending, that ain't my God. That's a man. So once you understand who truly in control, who truly got the power, all that, all that shit don't even matter no more. You don't even pay attention to that no more. And we live in a world right now when it comes to suicide, man, people will watch you bleed on the street, walk right over your body. So you actually mm. are the only one that's going to save your life. Ain't nobody going to care. Mm. They're not. Only the close ones in your family, but the rest of the world going to continue to spin. Mm. I said in one of my speeches, I said, when I die, I don't want them to be able to fit another body in the church mm. because of what I gave the world. And I meant that. And the only way I'm going to do that is if I go out here and I make a legacy for myself. I make a name. If I die, how the hell am I supposed to make that legacy? How am I going to be remembered forever when I was only here for a moment? Mm. So my job is every day is to exude excellence and to dominate my industry. Mm. But also, most important, knowing who leads the race. And that's God. Mm. And, and, and it's interesting that you, you, you say that because um, I also heard you speak about how much content you put out and how when you uh, originally started out, you put out more content than the biggest motivational speakers. You was really consistent with your your, your, your content, the output of your content. Um, where where did you learn your um, strategic sense of motivational speaking, promoting yourself, marketing? Where did you learn? I mean, you, you, you do albums. Um, you collaborate with artists like where, where did you learn that business sense? Like where, where, where did that come from? That side of it? Well, my businesses came from the streets, you know, Pontiac, Michigan. I, I grew up around all drug dealers. My grandma moved from Monroe, Louisiana, moved to Pontiac, Michigan, started running numbers, then taught all 12 kids how to cook crack 
and, and sell it. So mm. I grew up in the gladiator school was selling crack. You feel me? Selling drugs. I knew how to do it before I was 12, 13 years old. So once I understood business, I understood business is not about what you think about it. It's about what the majority people think about it. And a lot of people never reach success because they spend so much time mm. bragging on themselves when nobody knows them yet. That's a wasted time. And I also understood that good product needs no gimmicks. I learned everything from the streets. I also learned that people don't buy product, it buys what it represents. Just like the streets. I don't want to buy from a snitch, I'm going to buy from real. Mm. So I knew if I put out great product that needs no gimmicks, I'm going to win. If I put out motivation that touches the soul, not the ear, I'm going to win. And one thing I don't do, I don't read books. Because books taint my original creativity from the most high. Mm. How can I get a world that isn't something I've never seen before if I'm reading something from another man? That's not my journey. The only Bible I like to read is the Bible and the Quran. That's what I read. They give me all my motivation, gives me all my knowledge, puts me far above any of my competition. So what I did is I created a product that was undeniable. Mm. That's what I did, King. Mm. And, and it's powerful that you put it like that, how your representation how you are basically the representation of your product. You know, if you're real, they know what you bring in is real. And, and and I had never thought about it like that. I mean, that, that, that that's real powerful. Um, could you speak about um, the importance of mentorship and possibly what uh, the part that that played in your approach? Um, you, you, um, been able to build with um, one of your idols, Les Brown. And I know you said he was the first one that you actually watched his uh, motivational speech when you were trying to get a reference for it. Could you talk about some gems or some knowledge that he's dropped on you and, and how to navigate or how to, how to maneuver um, moving up in, as a motivational speaker? Well, he just taught me to be original, be myself, be mm. a world that I've never seen before. And what I took from that was don't be, uh, a, a carbon copy being the original. So he just taught me to be myself, be original. Give the world William Hollis. Don't create another Les Brown. Don't create another Eric Tom. Don't create any of them guys. Uh, Tony Robbins, Earl Nightingale, none of those guys. Just be yourself. Mm. And, and, and I think that's the, the biggest thing. I never really had a lot of mentors. So it, it really was, I was so good at what I did. People just gave me a couple gyms to keep going and keep moving. Um, mm. I met Les Brown because he was in the hospital listening to my speech, The Journey, mm. on YouTube. And uh, he has cancer. He was getting a blood infusion. And um, he was listening to it. And one of my quotes said, we didn't come this far, only come this far. So the man I turned on in the computer years ago when I was about to commit suicide called my phone and wanted to thank me for my inspiration. One of the greatest of all times. Goes back to God. Only God, bro. God did this. God wanted mm. to it. Mm. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. You have a powerful quote that I heard you um, that I heard you say. I, I was listening to it the other day. You said, "Only in the womb of a woman can a man breathe underwater," and that's such a deep concept because it's deeper than just birth. If you truly understand, like that's deep. Could you uh, kind of break down um, the inspiration for that quote and, and, and just what it means to you? Uh, only in the womb of a woman, you know, in, in the world that I lived in, growing up in the slums and in the hood, uh, my mom, her, her bosom, her womb was everything mm. I had. You know, my mom, my mom uh, protected me. You know, my mom will help me breathe in the water. The projects is water, drowning. You feel me? And your mother breathes oxygen into you every single night you walk through that door. And that's what my mother did to me every single day. She, she tried to attempt it. If she was high, if she wasn't, she had something positive to say to me every day to let me know that I can keep going, I can keep swimming, and I can keep fighting. So what I say is the woman is the most important entity in the world. The, the woman is the second hand of God, not man. The mm -hmm. woman is the only one that can create life and feed it without a man's help. 
She can create life, not create life part, but she can feed the baby. That's something powerful. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. You can leave that woman anywhere. God left everything on that woman for that baby to survive. Mm. That's why single mothers have been so successful. Mm. Mm. God already knew this was coming. It did. It, 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 it's all ordained, and, and and it's powerful that you put it like that because um, it makes me just think about you know where did, is that what pushed you further into um your spiritual walk because you felt like your oxygen was cut off and you needed to find the hey, source. Do you, do you edit this? Mm. Oh, but we can. All right, just a sec. Yes, absolutely. We'll edit it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm back, King. Yes, yes. And 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 it just brought up the question for me. Um, wh- where was your? Is that what pushed you further into your spiritual walk? Because you felt like your oxygen was cut off, and you needed to find another source, or perhaps the original source. Because you said the woman is our source of oxygen. Um, what helped me? It, what helped me, King, is just getting a relationship with the Most High, bro. I, I tell everybody like, it's no really no secret woman. It's God, bro. A lot of people fall away from God, bro. A lot of people forget Him. I just never forgot Him. I've, I've really been blessed and pushed to the next level when it comes to God, bro. Like I, I, I like look at me in the Super Bowl. Um, mm. Number one football speech in the world. I, that football speech was made. Um, I was homeless, and uh, out in um, uh, 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 Huntsville, Alabama, and I had hundred and thirty dollars. I gave a shooter uh, a videographer for hundred and twenty bucks. Gave him hundred twenty bucks. I kept ten, mm. and I drove a, 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 a tourist that I bought a few days before that. No tags, no nothing. Um, down to Atlanta, Georgia, slept in the AMC theater parking lot. And then uh, probably three days later, I got a call say, your football speech is going viral. So what I would tell everybody, my answer is God, bro. It's God. Mm. That's who did it. That's who do it. You got to attach yourself. You got to get plugged in, as they say. Mm. A lot of people ain't plugged in, bro. I'm plugged in. That's why I'm winning. Mm. That's why I'm winning. Big time, financially, career-wise, wife, children, friends, I'm winning because I know who to give it up to. It was God, bro. God did all this for me. Face without work, face without works is dead. I had to work with God. God will give you a tool belt, give you all the tools, but you ain't going to use them. I use mine. That's the secret. I... And what would you say is the biggest thing that helped you um, not take uh, an impoverished mindset into better circumstances? Like, what what what, what is something that helped you understand that um, you didn't have to over splurge, or maybe if you did over splurge when you started to see a little bit of success? But but what is something that kept you grounded and helped you adjust to your new reality and not take old mindset into a new reality? Bro, I, I was sleeping on the side of a gas station. See, that's something I'll never forget. Mm. You'll never forget that coming from homelessness. Coming from sleeping on people's couches, coming from people saying, get out of my house. You'll never forget that. So that that's the reason why I, I never get complacent. I don't blow nothing. It's family over everything. It's business first. Play if in. I never mm. play. I don't even own a game system. I don't play games, King. I play life and I play with all chips in. Mm-hmm. That's how I live my life, bro. With all chips in. So when you play with all chips in, you don't got no time to play no games. And you ain't got no call, you ain't got no time to pull no bad hand. So I'm very mature when it comes to that, bro. 
I had nothing. I come from nothing. I ain't never going back to that. Mm. So that's why I value and respect the dollar. And what is your source of rejuvenation um, when, when you're going so hard as you do and you, you, you're doing different speech, speeches and different events? Um, what, what's that one thing or, or, or a few things that actually help you kind of get out of that mindset? Or do you li- like to stay in that mindset? Is it more comfortable for you to stay into that grind mindset or is no, there something I'm, that I'm, takes I'm, you that, away from it? That's my DNA. I'm not, that's never mm-hmm. going to change it. But what I like to do is I like to go to the hood. Wherever I speak at, I go to the hood. I like mm-hmm. to talk to the people. I like to see my brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. I like to get inspiration and energy from them. Um, that's what I do. That's what makes me happy. I like going to the hood. I like my sometimes I might eat a meal in the project. You feel me? I I I, I just like being around my people. That's what mm-hmm. re, that's rejuvenate. That rejuvenates me. You what know? would you what would you say is 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 the different approach, if any, that you have when you're speaking to men rather than to boys? Like what what's that different approach that you that you have when you're speaking to boys or to 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 try to test them in, in a different way? Or is there a difference between the two or do you there, treat them both the There's no difference. Everything mm. lies in the heart. It's, if you mm. can touch the heart, if you can touch the heart, the heart is your real brain. The heart is your real brain. Not here. It's here. The heart does all the thinking. The heart transmits all the things that you feel in your mind. The reason why you feel it is because it's coming from your heart. All feelings go through your heart. So I know if I can touch the heart, I can touch the soul. I can touch the mind. I can touch the body. And once I got the heart, first you open the heart. It's like open heart surgery. Then you, 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 what you do is it's like the game of operations. Everybody know when you when that thing hit that side of that thing, and, mm. and you, you're not hitting. But when you reach in straight handed and focus, you pull it out of there with ease. So I'm playing operation every speaking engagement. Mm-hmm. And 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 what would you say is is has always been your technique for for staying calm in, in moments like that. I, I've done a few speaking engagements myself, and honestly, it, it can be nerve-wracking at times. You know, I, I do poetry slams as well, and it can be nerve-wracking at times. But what would you say is your technique for just staying calm under high-pressure moments? Or has it always been something that comes naturally to I was you? Born, I was born to be a speaker. Mm. I was born. A lot of people want to do it. I was born for this, bro. Mm. I was born for this. Like a lot of people choose it. I was chosen. Every time I speak, I, I don't even know. I don't even plan on a speech. It just comes from the heart. Every message that I do. I don't have paperwork to scripts with any speeches I've ever done. I don't write speeches. So it was really in me, bro. You know what I mean? That's the best thing I can describe it. It's in me. I was born to do it. And it's it's crazy because I was gonna ask you that like how how was your writing process but that's that's powerful for you to um to feel that calling enough to go into the situation and 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 feel like all right well you know God's gonna give me what to say in this situation He's gonna guide me in this situation like that's powerful and and that could be a nerve wracking experience for some but like you said it's 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 chosen it's in you um what would you say was your most passionate speech you've ever delivered or the one that kind of moved you and um, you feel like you was just in um, what they call flow state like it was just or are you always in flow state my last one <laughs> mm. uh, every the, every the, every the last one I do is always going to be that like that mm. I think I think that's the distinctive difference between me and other speakers bro usually nine times out of ten every time I speak to an audience they say it's the best speech I've ever heard in my life mm. and that's Honestly, every time, bro. And that's 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 the honest guy truth. I take no credit. I give all glory to the most high. But every speech I do, bro, is just it, it just comes from a different place, bro. It really does, man. And you gotta see it to believe it. 
You know, you got to see it in person. And you'll and know exactly you could, what, I, what I'm I, Absolutely. And if you could give some advice to your younger self, just in, in, in terms of um, how to be more efficient, what, what what's one piece of advice you would give to your younger self? Uh, stay true to yourself. Mm. Be you by any means necessary. Stay mm. you. Don't change your voice tone. Don't talk like, you know, operating on a, be you, bro. Mm. Because if a person sees that person and that person stays that same person throughout his life, that man gains respect that a lot of men can't get. Because everybody that knows him says the same thing about him. Consistency. Mm. Word I give myself. Stay consistent. With your dreams, working on your dream, working on yourself, um, delivering great messages. Stay consistent with that. Don't go out there and be a one-trick pony. Mm. Be an onion, <laughs> not an orange. <laughs> <laughs> consistency, consistency. Man, I appreciate that. Um, and 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 I appreciate you dropping these gems on us and and, and just sharing a few moments like um. I just want to say, like, it, th th this has been a, a very powerful conversation and I got so much from it uh, personally. And that's why I honestly believe that everything happens in alignment. Everything happens for a purpose. Like, I, I needed this conversation today. So I appreciate you um, just blessing us with those gems and and just being vulnerable. Um, and um, I, I really appreciate you. Tell them where they can find you or, or where they can find some of your your, your speeches. You can find me at William King Hollis on Instagram on that page or have everything on it. Um, also, you can find me uh, on um, Twitter, um, uh, The Real King Hollis. Uh, no, King Hollis Co. on Twitter, um, The Real King Hollis on TikTok. Uh, you know, um, I don't I don't use um, a website or anything like that. Mm. Uh, it's, a, it's a secret of mine that I do a business. Um, push you on high demand. So you know, uh, I, I, I'm a, I'm a person that uh, you can find me uh, most of the time on Instagram. And if you write me, I do always write back. I never miss a DM. I write. Mm. I answer DM. What, what what does that come from? It comes from starting from the bottom, writing all the top celebrities when I was at the bottom, and nobody ever wrote back. People reading your messages and leaving them on read. I always told myself, and I promise God, if I ever make it to a certain level, I'm going to answer every DM from every man and take his own time to write me because it might just be a message from God. Ooh. That's powerful. That's powerful, man. Man, um, I appreciate you doing this, man. I, I really appreciate you. Um, this is just Anytime, a powerful man. conversation. So, you, you're a Michigan kid, man. I love I, As soon as you told me that, bro, I was... And you told me mental health, that's something I focus on. So it 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 will be I I'd be a sucker not to hop on your show and not to answer your call, bro. I I I I always remember I told you how I stay grounded, and I'll never get cocky, I'll never get arrogant. Uh, because bro, I remember where I came from, bro. I keep mm. I keep that on. You always remember where you came from to the at the front of your head, not the back. Mm. Man. That's a blessing. I, I appreciate you. I'm, I'm just humbled that you you responded and, and you you came on. And um, this is a blessing. This is a blessing. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned in for the next episode of One on One with Ahmad the Poet. This is the, this is a very powerful conversation, man. Appreciate you. Honored to have you on. Y'all stay tuned in the next one. Peace. <laughs>